Hi guys, welcome back to the Ardor server. So in today's video, I'm going to show you guys this thing. This is a new item that I've put in my store. And what this is, is an HP Z Turbo Drive G2. And you guys might be familiar with this. Basically, it's a PCIe adapter that allows you to mount a M.2 SSD into the PCI slot. And there are a whole bunch of uh, varieties of these type of things on eBay and Amazon, all that stuff. And, you know, they can be had for fairly cheap. But a lot of them are, let's just say, under-engineered and require like a rubber band to mount the heat sink. And I don't know, they're just not, you know, they're cheap for a reason, basically. And this is the HP version of it. And this is actually very nicely engineered. And in fact, in a way, you could say it's over-engineered. And I'll tell you more about that in a second here. But basically, uh, this has a built-in heat sink. You'll need a... T8 Torx screwdriver to unmount this. So let me just kind of show you. There's two screws that hold the heat sink on this side and there's uh, this kind of um, bracket that kind of latches onto the PCB board on the other side and so it just comes right off. There's a thermal pad under this to make contact with the SSD. And there are th three mounting holes Primarily, most people are probably going to use the 2280, uh, which is this last mounting hole right here. And so as you can see, this is a little bit more sophisticated than most of the cheap uh, PCIe M.2 adapters that you'll see on eBay and Amazon. Uh, however, the reason why this is over-engineered is because there's some logic in this board here that actually prevents this machine or this card from starting up. So it shuts down the PCI lanes on this card if this is not installed in a HPZ uh, 840 workstation. And so basically I think there's a, a special signal probably through SMBus or something like that uh, on the HPZ 840 workstation. And, and if you plug this into a Z840, it'll work just fine, just as is. But um, if you plug this into any other type of computer, if it doesn't get that signal from the HPZ 840, the card shuts itself down and it doesn't work. So HP did uh, over-engineer the card in that way. I'm not really sure why they did that. But anyway, I found a way to unlock this card so that it can work in any uh, PC that supports PCI 3.0, basically. And today I'm going to be installing this card as my boot drive for the Dell T7910. So this is definitely not an HP machine. It's the Dell T7910 that you guys have seen in the previous videos and stuff like that. So I'm going to be using this as the boot drive and today we're going to install this M.2 SSD. It's a 256 gig Samsung PM981A uh, and we're going to install Fedora 33 workstation on the T7910. All right, so let's get the SSD installed. And by the way, I have these in my store if I didn't mention that already. And the ones I have in my store have already been modified so that this will work in any PC. Now, one thing, if you're going to be buying this from anybody else, uh, one thing to caution you guys about is make sure you find the mounting screw. All right, so especially if you're getting these refurbished, sometimes people take these apart and throw away the mounting screw or they lose it. This screw is extremely hard to find. It is a special M1.2 millimeter thread uh, size, and it's just really, really hard to find. And so all the ones that I sell for sure will have a mounting screw included and ha again, have been modified to work in any PC. Uh, so, okay, we'll go ahead and insert this. Yeah, I bought a whole batch of these and um, found of several that were missing the mounting screws and so those obviously I can't sell. I'm not going to sell you guys something that's um, not going to be complete and working. But anyway, uh, thermal pad is also included and now thermal pad, if you if you happen to get one that doesn't have a thermal pad, these are not that hard to find. You can find them on Amazon. This is basically I think 20 millimeters by 70 millimeters. So you just have to find one with the right thickness and uh, any of them should work. All right, so now 
now that we have this ready to go, let's go ahead and put it in the T7910. I've already prepared a open PCI slot. This is where I'm going to install this uh, M.2 SSD now. So let's see here. All right. All right, so the next step will be, I already have my Fedora workstation installer USB drive in here. This is going to be Fedora 33. We're going to go ahead and set this machine up with Fedora 33 workstation uh, using the um, Mate uh, desktop environment. And uh, we'll get the driver set up. I have a NVIDIA uh, 9, 980Ti uh, card in here, so we're going to install the NVIDIA driver as well. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and choose install Fedora 33. All right, so we have English, English, click continue. Okay, so let's see, no disk select, selected, so let's start with that. Uh, looks like, yeah, I already mounted some, um, Hitachi uh, SAS3 SSDs, and those look like they're all detected. But here is the NVMe drive that I'm gonna install the OS on. So that's where I'm going to do the OS installation for now. And I'll go ahead and pick uh, custom for the disk layout. All right, so let's just get the default layout first. And I think everything here looks okay. I'm just going to modify one thing here. I'm going to label the uh, the volume uh, Fedora underscore system instead of just Fedora Fedora. And I think that's pretty much good. Hit done. Accept changes. So as you can see, that NVMe drive is detected just fine in that HP adapter that's been modified. All right, so installation source, uh, software selection. So I'm going to pick the Mate desktop environment and let's just pick some of, so this machine is going to become my wife's uh, main workstation. So uh, just gonna pick up a few things that I think she's going to want to use. All right, so I think that's good enough. Well, maybe some administration tools and the rest we can always install later on. Oh, actually, you know, yeah, let me also add the editors. All right, click on done. And time zone is correct. Network is detected just fine. So this is definitely a much smoother uh, installation process than on that Lenovo, uh, mainly because the Lenovo had just kind of a unique uh, network interface. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and set a password. And I'll create a user account. All right, so all we have to do is click on begin installation. All right, before I do, I'm gonna set up a camera to record this and uh, then I'll walk away from this. All right guys, so that installation took about 10 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and click on reboot and I'm going to pull out my installer USB drive. Oops, 
I pulled it out too soon. All right, I'm just gonna reset the machine. All right, so let's go ahead and log in. Looking good. I believe I should have network. Yep, I'm connected. So first thing I wanna do here is enable the RPM Fusion repository, so Let's just go ahead and go to Google first. And <clears throat> there's a download URL. So uh, let's do Fedora 33 RPM Fusion uh, install. So let's click on this link here and I'm just gonna jump ahead. Cause all I really need is this URL and this URL. So. Let me open up a terminal. All right, so let me cut and paste this command. I'll say yes. And actually, let me blow that up a little bit so you guys can see a little bit better. Okay, and then the non-free version, which I believe includes things like the NVIDIA drivers and other not so open source friendly things. Looks like I'm getting a timeout error here. Let's try this again. All right, there we go. Okay, so once I have that installed, what I actually want to do next is uh, simple screen recorder. Oh, I spelled simple wrong. Missed an E there. Okay, now that I have simple screen recorder, I'm gonna switch over to the screen recorder. That way you guys have a better view of what's going on over here. Let me go, go ahead and set that up with the mic and I'll be right back. All right guys, so I have the simple screen recorder set up with my Blue Yeti mic and hopefully now you guys have a better view of what's on the screen here. Uh, the Blue Yeti mic worked perfectly fine, just plugged it in basically and it showed right up. So just to compare and contrast to that, uh, with the ThinkStation P620 where I previously really struggled with getting the Blue Yeti mic going. Uh, I think that was probably due to a USB controller issue on the P620. Uh, I've gotten this Blue Yeti mic to now work uh, in the T7910 just fine. It's worked in the HP Z840 just fine. And it's worked in my previous uh, workstation machine as well. So uh, yeah, really don't really know why, um, what in particular, wasn't working with the P620 ThinkStation with, and the Blue Yeti mic, but uh, in any case, I don't think it was a mic issue. I think it's just a USB controller issue on the P620. All right, anyway, moving on. Next step is I've got a NVIDIA GTX 980 Ti in this machine, so I'm gonna go ahead and install the NVIDIA drivers. So to do that, um, I'm gonna use the AK mod method, which basically installs the source code and, and uh, triggers a uh, packaging of the NVIDIA drivers every time there's a kernel installed. And if you're doing this from scratch, by the way, you're gonna have to make sure you have the RPM Fusion repositories, which I already installed because I needed that in order to install the simple screen recorder. Um, but if you haven't done that step, make sure you do that first. But afterwards, it's actually really quite simple. We simply do DNF install AK mod NVIDIA dash NVIDIA and this will pull in all the dependencies required for the NVIDIA driver. So I'll go ahead Oh, and let me blow this up so you guys can see this a little bit better on screen. All right, and go ahead and hit yes. All 
All right, so that's pretty much it. Very simple install. So if you guys ever need to install an NVIDIA driver, I highly recommend just doing it this way. And, and the next time you have a kernel update, it'll basically automatically compile the uh, compile and package the NVIDIA driver and install it for the new kernel as well. So this is the most convenient way and the simplest way that I know of to get the NVIDIA driver going in Fedora 33 uh, and even in previous uh, releases of Fedora Linux. All right, so before I reboot here, I'm also going to install a couple of things I'd like to have. LS SCSI, PCI Utils, and NVMe CLI. So we're gonna need that in order to take a look at the NVMe drive that we just installed. So let me go ahead and install those as well. It looks like I already have the PCI utils. All right, so at this point, I should be able to run NVMe uh, list. And there you have the Samsung SSD, the 256 gigabyte SSD that I installed on the HPZ TurboDrive G2 working in a Dell T7910. So yeah, with the proper mod on that card, it works just fine in pretty much any PC that has PCI 3.0 support. Uh, I believe you can also get it to work in a PCI 2.0 machine, but because there is only four PCI lanes, I don't recommend that you try to use that. Um, you'll basically lose about half the bandwidth because of the PCI 2.0 speeds. All right, so before uh, I wrap up this video, I'm gonna reboot, make sure that we have the NVIDIA driver working, and then I'm gonna go and show you where you can find that HPZ Turbo Drive uh, at my eBay store, uh, where it's already been pre-modified and unlocked so that you can uh, use it in any other PC that you want to. All right, so let me uh, go ahead and just reboot this machine, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, the machine has booted right up, and let's go ahead and see if the NVIDIA driver is what is loaded. All right, indeed, there you go. NVIDIA driver version 460.56, and everything seems to be working just right. Okay, so as promised, before I log off here on this video, let's go check on eBay. Oops, there we go. So on eBay, if you search for HPZ Turbo Drive G2 and use the word unlocked, there you will find my listing. And I'll go ahead and click on that. And so this is the HPZ Turbo Drive that I just used in this T7910. And as you can see, it is, uh, it is the unlocked version. So if you uh, want to use this HPZ uh, turbo drive in a computer other than the HPZ 840, you can go ahead and get it right there. All right, guys, uh, that's it for today's video. I will be making some more videos on the T7910. Specifically, my wife has told me she wants really fast storage, and so I'll be upgrading the storage subsystem in the T7910 with something really fast. Along those lines, I think I have an interesting idea on how to maximize storage performance versus data redundancy. So if that interests you, be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for those upcoming videos. If you like this video, be sure to give me that thumbs up. And if you'd like to support my channel, check out my eBay store. I'll leave a link down in the video description below. Thanks for watching guys and have a great day. Bye-bye.